Hi kids, here's Miss Charlotte. Miss Keisha and I are going to talk to you for two weeks on bugs, insects, spiders, and worms. And uh, I'm going to start off with insects today. And this is kind of a play insect, isn't it? But I wanted to show it to you that they have three sections. They have their head, their thorax, and their abdomen. And they have six, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six legs. They have their antennas, and that helps them to smell. They have five eyes. They are, here's two big ones. And then the middle of those big ones are three smaller ones. And they have four wings. You can usually only see two because they've got them together to make them stronger so they can fly. But that's what uh, we're going to talk about today. And I have a book that's called A Grumbly Bee. Look at that bee. <laughs> uh, Kyle Newburn wrote this story. Let's see what he wrote. The Grumbly Bee. From dawn till dusk, the busy bees buzz from flower to flower, filling their socks with pollen. Every bee knows that cupboards must be full by the time winter comes along. Buzz, buzz. The hive is a buzz. Some bee has found lots of sweet, juicy pollen. Every bee gathers for the dance of direction. And bees do dance around. Uh, if they know where some uh, pollen is, they kind of dance around and give directions where it is. Buzz north across a blooming red sea, then buzz west over a carpet of gold. Behind an orange hedge is a wildflower field, bursting with purple poppies, popping pollen. That sounds good to them. Every bee buzzes away as quick as can be. Glib tries to keep up, but he's much too slow. With no bee to follow, Glib doesn't know which way to go. Here he is, way back there. And he can all he can see is gray. So Glib has to follow his nose. When Glib finally arrives, every bee is buzzing busily. And there was no flowers free. This is my flower, Glib grumbles, chasing some bee away. No bee owns the flowers, some bee laughs. There's almost, they're almost empty anyway, every bee whispers. Grumbling glibs too late, as usual. No matter how busily glib buzzes, his socks never get full. And what they mean by their socks, they carry their pollen in pollen baskets and that pollen basket is made out of special hairs on the back of their uh, back legs. So that's where they carry them. One day, Glib's nose started twitching itchily. What's that pollenicious smell, Glib asked. No bee else can smell it. It must be all that nectar in your belly, every bee laughs. Glib's nose kept itchily twitching, so he's decided he's going to follow that smell. Nobody will miss me, Glib thinks sadly, so he just goes off on his own. Over swaying fields and grassy meadows, Glib zigs. Through twitchering forest and shady glades, he zags. Further, still further than any bee has ever been. Glib ends up in the city. See? That doesn't look, uh, he doesn't like this strange place, not one bit. There's no bee anywhere, no trees or flowers either. But the pollenicious smells draws him on, so he keeps going. He knows he smells something. Suddenly, Glib's eyes grew to twice their size. His nose nearly knots with joy. The rocky hillside is crowded with flowers, and the air is so thick with pollen that Glib's socks fill up all by themselves. 
Glib knows he should report his discovery, but if he tries to dance directions, everybody's going to laugh. So he decides he's just going to keep it a secret. Every morning, Glib sneaks away to his private secret garden. When he returns to the hive, his socks are bulging with pollen, but everybody laughs. Grumbling Glib must have very big socks. It takes a whole day to fill them once. See his hind legs right there? Can you see? You can tell there's something in them. He's got pollen in there. One terrible night, a freezing frost falls. Blossoms crinkle up and their pollen turns brown. Glib doesn't notice that the fields are all painted white. It's nice and warm in his secret garden. The city's just fine. From dawn till dusk, every bee buzzes extra busily, but the cupboards stay empty. Soon there isn't going to be enough pollen to keep busy bees fed. They're going to get weak and weaker until they can't get up out of bed. One morning, Glib opens a cupboard and he said, it's empty. He opens another cupboard. Cupboard. It's empty. All the cupboards are empty. That's where they keep their pollen. In their pine. In their uh, honeycomb. Glib buzzes around the hive. Every bee, wake up! He cries. Some bees stolen all of our honey. No bee stirs. I have to tell the queen, Glib decides. No bee tries to stop him. Some bees stolen all of our pollen, Glib reports. The queen shakes her head weakly. Nobody stole our pollen, Glib. There's just not enough for every bee. I know where there's lots of pollen, Glib says. I fear it's too late, Glib. The queen sighs, no bee strong enough to fly anymore. No bee but me, thinks Glib, over barren fields and plunged meadows. Glib zings through steel forest and leafless glades. He zags, despite the terrible fear creeping along his wings. What if there's a frost in his secret garden too? Finally, Glib reaches his secret garden. The air is swirling with pollen, but there's no time to stop and smell the flowers. Glib fills his socks, then hurries hivewards, battling the bitter wind all the way. Glib races from bed to bed, popping a pollen grain into each of the hungry mouths. After making sure some bee takes the juiciest pollen to the queen, Glib heads back out into the cold. Glib is busier than any bee has ever been. Soon other bees are strong enough and they join him. It's a race to fill the cupboards before winter arrives, but together they make it. Yay, there they go. He's sharing his secret place. That's good. In the spring, the whole hive moves to Glib's secret garden. Glib's socks are always fuller than any bee's, and no bee ever goes hungry again. That was so good, wasn't it? And what was the name of it? The Grumbling Bee. There you go. And they gave an example of a bee that you can make. I've got part of it made. I got a white piece of paper. And uh, a cut, like, sort of egg-shaped, and it's kind of oval because it's not really round. And then I put four lines in it. One, two, three, four. And then it says you can take tissue paper, which is the paper, you know, when you get a present, you get a sack with uh, your birthday present in it, and it's got paper in it stuffed in it that's called tissue paper so if you have some tissue paper that's yellow if your mom has some you go yellow black yellow black and yellow 
I couldn't find any black at my house, any black tissue paper. So just use what you've got. If you've got construction paper, it, you know what this actually is? It's a black napkin that I found at the dollar store. So it's just anything black or you could just color it. You don't even have to put any tissue paper on it at all. That's a good idea. Just yellow, black, yellow, black, and yellow. I left a few of them blank just to show you how easy it is. This is the black one because it's kind of a pattern. Yellow, black, yellow, black. And you get little squares of your paper. And you just kind of stick them on there. See? You don't have to... You can scrunch them if you want to. You can put them flat if you want to. I've kind of tried to squinch, squinch mine up just a little bit. So it'd be kind of fluffy. See? So you can make one row or two rows. Every, how much you want to fill up inside your lines. So you put yellow at the top and yellow at the bottom. Yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow. If your mama will let you, you can put a stinger. If she's not real uh, sure about putting a toothpick on it, you might find something that's not quite so sharp. But this is a toothpick for a stinger. And here's its antennas. And then I've got some white construction paper that we're going to put right here. And one on this side for its wings. And then when you get this yellow right here, you can add some. You can draw them. Or you can put some eyeballs. See? If you have some of these googly eyes, you can put some eyeballs. But this is kind of half or over half made just to show you how to make it. And uh, I taped my antennas on because I was uh, afraid that they wouldn't have time to dry before I wanted to show this to you. But this is our bumblebee. And I, had, I got these at um, the Dollar Tree, I think. These were uh, honey pots and some bees. And your mom might could help you do this. If, or you can use, uh, make your own. See, I got the number two here. So it's going to be on the honey pot that has, I just put stars. You can put whatever you want to. But this B goes with this honey. See? Let's do another one. What number is this? Three. Okay, let's see if we can find three. That looks way more than three. But it's back toward the end. Three, where are you? Is that it? No, nope, that's four. Three. One, two, three. So this honey pot goes with this bee. See how easy it is to match them? And that's just something fun to do. There's a honey pot. One. This goes with this one. See? So if you happen to see something like that, you could put your ABCs on them, like your capital A, matching your lowercase a, and all you could do numbers. Just do whatever you want to and make, make a little work job out of them. It's kind of fun. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.